Hello Abacus user. Welcome to Abacus Acumen for quick and sound learning. Today's session we are going to do on a model dynamics part using a single degree of uh, spring mass system. So right now on my screen you see a single degree of uh, spring mass system. So what we are going to do, uh, we will calculate the natural frequency of spring mass system based on the oscillation time. So we are always uh, uh, find this definition of natural frequency any system which you disturb from its equilibrium position it start vibrating in natural frequency so what we'll do first we'll do a model analysis of spring mass system we'll find out what is frequency and then we'll what we'll do we'll take a spring we'll pull it in one step and then we'll release it and then we'll just measure what is a uh, oscillation time over a period of time and then we'll try to reconnect that which are natural frequency of system so this is what exercise will do this is a more like a fundamental video we are not going to go through complex equation we'll try to solve more virtual practical problem so we'll once you understand this problem how to solve you can based on this fundamentals you can solve a lot of complex problem so let's uh, let's go to drawing board before going to drawing board will strongly recommend you to go through our first video this is our lesson 4 our lesson 1 is abacus standard fundamentals and model analysis will strongly recommend you to go through this going through this you will understand the basic con concepts of model analysis why the natural frequency forcing frequency ratio you will try to uh, correlate lot of amplitude versus the frequency ratio or phase angle versus uh, frequency ratio diagram you will understand the concept of resonance damping everything so we strongly recommend you to go through this and then let's go to the drawing board so this will be like an introduction to modal dynamics this is we are going to get um, important learning of a time period of oscillation that is what exactly we'll do so before jumping into direct problem I'll just in nutshell just explain the two diagram one is amplitude diagram which show the amplitude ratio versus the uh, frequency ratio and other is uh, the, the phase angle versus frequency ratio this is more fundamental uh, theory of vibration uh, diagram and this is available in any theory of machine book you need to understand this diagram very well to understand the the modal dynamics and natural frequency all those things so we all learn that when the forcing frequency and natural frequency of any systems happen for untamped uh, uh, undamped system it gives a infinite uh, amplitude of displacement where frequency matches with that and then as you put a damping ratio your the displacements come down so even though you get a peak displacement even with a damping where you see the loading and natural frequency match and then for a critical damping case it just damp, damp down quickly but if you see this one where actually loading and natural frequency ratio go to zero this is nothing but your static response it is one so the x static is your k in divided by f0 which is nothing but your static response and then if natural frequency match and say for example the damping ratio is 0.1 then your the dynamic response is 5 times of static response 5 I am saying corresponding to this if the damping is 0.2 then it's corresponding to something like a 2.5 so there is amplification of displacement if loading and natural frequency match and as loading and natural frequency ratio cross beyond 2 or beyond 1.5 then your response dynamic response is much lower than your static response if you want to go to details uh, go through our first video which I told you that the fundamentals and the modal analysis of that. and the other thing is when loading and natural frequency match your phase angle is match and then if the loading and unloading frequency tends to zero then your phase angle uh, the the loading uh, the, uh, the based on the ratio your phase angle is different it is not not uh, uh, in line with uh, your force and then what we'll do we'll model a spring mass system 
will give will pull this system and then allow it to oscillate in its natural frequency and then we'll plot this your uh, uh, time period of oscillation and amplitude and based on this this is what we are going to do, uh, learn time period of oscillation time and we'll try to connect that to natural frequency so for for first thing what i'll do i'll just plot a single degree of freedom spring mass system this is a damper and i have a mass here so i have a mass i have a spring with stiffness and i have a damper and if i write uh, and then i apply uh, external force which is a time dependent force and if i write a e the equation for this uh, newton's law of equation there is mx double dot which is my inertia force cx dot which is my damping force and this is my spring stiffness or uh, static uh, stiffness force and then this is corresponding to time so this is my mx the double dot this is nothing but my acceleration this is my velocity and this is my displacement so this is my inertia force this is my dampening force and this is my stiffness force and then the natural frequency of any systems when you disturb the any system from its equilibrium position it's start to vibrate in its natural position so there is no external force we are going to apply in uh, model analysis so this is zero then it become mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to zero any system where the structural damping is two to five percent so this this portion is also negligible so this is also negligible so you can neglect it and then if you want to uh, keep a damping factor and solid like two to five percent uh, damping ratio you are loading and so if we, i put one minus point zero two square and take uh, square root of that which will be nothing but a point nine 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 and multiply by that omega n so your damp and undamped natural frequency are same so there is no point to put a damping in uh, model analysis and make that complex if you solve this problem omega n if i calculate it nothing but under root k by m and this is nothing but in radians per second this is a circular natural frequency if i multiply that by 2 pi omega n it become my linear natural frequency so this become hertz and if i make this one by this frequency it's nothing but my second so this is my time period of oscillation so when whenever you see any system oscillating from this you take a two peak points you take a two peak points take that time whatever time it is and then you for frequency you make that one by time based on this equation so you get a natural frequency in hertz and then if you that frequency if you divide it by 2 pi you will get radians per second so uh, practically when you do a practical problem actual problem experiment you oscillate the system and period measure the time period of oscillation and the based on that you calculate the natural frequency in solver you have like direct command to use a model analysis and you can measure what is the frequency of system but this is the more fundamental way how to measure this and then we'll also plot a displacement over a period of time and we'll measure what is the time period of oscillation and then we'll try to reconnect to the uh, natural frequency uh, concept and then then how it is connected so I'll just uh, quickly tell you how what problem we're going to solve so I'm going to put a spring and a mass and I'm going to pull this mass by 5 millimeter and I'm going to release it and then it start oscillating and uh, just to simplification of you we had taken this uh, this is your spring stiffness 0 0.005 uh, 
5 kg is mass I taken so if you take this ratio uh, under root k by m so this is what I had done and you take the square root of that divided by 2 pi so I I get a 50 Hertz frequency and I, if I do 1 by 50 I get 0 0.019 so I'm going to get first is a 50 Hertz frequency and then we'll model the actual problem so let's 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 start modeling this in Abacus so I'll say new and the other learning what you'll get is uh, based on this is one minute okay so I put a new and I'll set working directory it is already set so first I'll make a model analysis quick model analysis will do we'll say create I'll say 2d uh, discrete rigid point and I'll say this is a mass and uh, I'll say I want 0 comma minus 50 a point so I get 0 comma minus 50 I got a mass here I can queue engineering feature I can say create and I say the point mass which is nothing but point mass of 5 kg so it's a 5 e power minus 0 9 we are using a SI units so it's a ton Newton millimeter second so this is nothing but 5 e power minus uh, 9 ton so so it's a uh, it's a no, not 5 kg it's a 5 e power minus 9 ton so if I multiply this by 3 so it's a very negligible mass uh, we have put there I say okay and then then I directly go and create mass I created the assembly instant and then I'll create one more point because I want 0 comma 0 so I got a two points and one and two and I'm going to put here a spring so I'm going to create spring here so I have selected the first point and I selected the point which have mass so done so I have a spring and I also calculate what is the spring stiffness is a 0 0.005 this is just to get a for a 50 Hertz frequency you can change any ra any ratio what you want for this and change here so you, you also have here something like dampening dampening question so you have we already created the spring now here now I'll just give one boundary condition here and first try to learn mass participation factor and everything and then we'll solve the complex problem so I just go here and say step create I say model I'll say model and I'll go here linear and say frequency so I say I want first three frequency it's a three degree of freedom but its spring stiffness is only in one direction so there are chances couple of rigid body modes are coming will come so we give on a frequency and then I go and I say load and I say boundary condition so I want to have top end caster condition so I selected that and put end caster condition so now this is how it looks like I am given end caster condition here I given a mass here and I calculate what is spring stiffness and I'll say first get me what is the modal analysis so 
I'll just quickly create a job. Model. And I say OK and we'll submit it and check how it looks like. So it should be quick and fast. Just monitor how much time it takes. So we just submitted. So I guess it will will have the so the the analysis got completed. I'll say as a results, and this is how the it looks like a spring, and then we'll say what different. So like couple of uh, we have almost like a negligible frequency which is nothing but uh, rigid body motion and then we have a 50 hertz frequency so we are interested in the actual frequency so this is just a linear displacement of spring so you see in this post processing it shows a spring now we'll quickly uh, read something like how the model analysis looks like we'll just read a uh, data mass participation factor so we just open it and then we'll see how it looks like so if you open the dat file you'll see uh, this is it saying appears to be rigid body so this is rigid body mode this is rigid body mode and then this is a radiance per second 316 and then 50.39 is hertz that's what actually we manually calculated so you see here this is what the the radiance per second and the hertz frequency we have calculated and one more important point here i just want to understand put to you your participation factor so if you see the participation factor this is almost is a component of one participation here so you can see how the participation is there and you see the whole mass is getting participated in y direction and this is the one and two are like a rigid body mode and this is your the real mode 50.329 so this was a quick model analysis we done now what we know we know the what is a frequency and you do one by this uh, 50.329 your time period of oscillation is 0 0.019 or 0 0.02 if i take the spring mass system pull it and release it it will start oscillating in the same time period of zone so what i'll do i'll again say new i'll solve this as a not a 3d problem so i'll say create 3d problem and what we'll do first because we are going to solve this in dynamic explicit so we need to have something for a time step calculation we'll have a separate session on the how the critical time step is calculated but we want something deformable shell or something which can calculate the critical time step so i'm going to first create uh, one part and i'm going to just put this as a this is just like a shell i am just going to put for a time step control i'll just rename it I'll quickly create the model property. So since I'm going to do in dynamic explicit, I'll give this 7.85 e power minus z density, and then I'll give uh, to 10 in power 0 0.3 and 0 0.3 as a Poisson's ratio. and then we'll give some one thickness one millimeter this is not going to participate this is just for a time step control factor so we created shell now we'll create a mass 
so discrete rigid point mass so using coordinates so so we'll give the coordinate for point is like 0 comma 0 minus 50 comma 0 so you get a one point here which is nothing your mass so I am going to put inertia on that like five e power minus nine so this is I just put a inertia there so I had a inertia there and then I'll quickly go and do assembly now this shell is just for a time period control it doesn't contribute in the our, our analysis so I'll also put a reference point here at 0 comma 0 and then I'm going to quickly put a spring there two points so one is this this is two so this is your nothing but spring and then spring stiffness will put it like 0 0.0005 so I'll just quickly put a spring stiffness you can put a damping coefficient we are not going to put damping so this is what we are done now what will will have two steps in one step we'll try to pull it by five millimeter release it and second step will measure the time period of oscillation so I'll say now step so we step and then I'll say create and I'll say pull so first I'm going to pull it so this is my I'm going to do a dynamic explicit it will be like 0 0.1 second so 0 0.1 second will pull it and then I'll quickly put a load I'll first at the top put an end caster condition uh, fixed will put so done end caster condition and then we are going to just pull this so I'll, I'll create pull force uh, I'll, I'll not put a force I'll put a displacement here so I'll say create and I'll say pull pull boundary condition I'll say displacement and then I'm going to select that so I selected that and then we'll put like this as a minus 5 and then we'll, we'll just create a tabular amplitude here so we'll have time period 0 uh, amplitude 0 time period 0 0.1 amplitude 1 so we'll just pull it so we are going to pull it only in y direction that is what exactly we put in pull condition so if you see here in pull condition we put minus 5 and over a period of time you just pull the whole system so this is our pull thing then we'll put one more step in this step we'll release the spring so we'll put a release and this will be like a dynamic explicit thing and this is also a point one this is release we are going to release it so uh, let's look into first the boundary condition how it looks I still not release so fix which is going to have this in the pool we are created and this will make it deactive so once we are making deactive we'll release it and then for step 2 uh, we'll have additional things we are going to measure uh, one more history time history output I'll create one more 
time history output for the release step which will have not for whole model this will be like uh, not every sp space so one minute one minute we'll just just measure so not whole model we'll say set and I'm going to measure uh, displacement for this displacement uh, will measure like u2 and then the set is like mass set so we'll measure how it is going for this so say okay I'll also go and create a st uh, in part itself will create one more set so I'll go here and in mass we will check what we have set one so set one is nothing but the the mass part so let me go to the step and we'll say set one so my this one is nothing but set one we already have that so done and I'm going to now create a job I'll say spring and let's quickly do the data check so so we are not mesh it uh, no we'll just quickly put a mesh on that shell part which is nothing but uh, actually just for a time step control we have put that so I'll put 5 and then we'll just mesh it so you get a two parts and then we'll quickly put a data check so let's go to the data check so I'll just explain what we are done by the time data checks is there we created a spring we created a mass we pulled this by minus 5 and this is in step 1 we fixed it here and then it just move in y direction and step 2 we release it so once we release it it is going to oscillate it it is going to oscillate its at its natural frequency that's what actually will measure So it's completed, uh, just successfully completed. So there is no issue with the uh, data check. So I'll submit it and then we'll just wait for results. So analysis just completed. So this is what I was talking. It's like uh, stable time increment. To just to get this time increment, I put that shell element. Otherwise that shell element is useless. It is not uh, acting any uh, anything this. So we can remove it also. I just load the results we don't require the shell and we pull it and release it so this is how it looks like we'll calculate the time period also so you see now I pull it and then release it and it start oscillating its natural frequency now we'll measure what is the time period of that so ODP history plot we already given the 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 bottom element node set so this is how we plotted so this is what you see in the release step second step we had given this output so uh, I'll just put this this font in abacus is very small so most of the time you doesn't uh, able to read it so I'll also put this title so this is you see what you see in the time period of oscillation so if you see this 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 peak or I take this as a point one two 
uh, 0.14 minus 0.1 so so if time period of oscillation is nothing but your 0 0.02 this is nothing but what we calculated here if i take this the the time period of oscillation like this this time you do one by t of that that t will give you frequency so this is what exactly we calculated so the major learning out of this is, is a spring mass system how you can plot this uh, different displacement versus time and then if you see this the the peak uh, it's going from minus 5 to positive 5 so there is no damping so this just oscillation keep on going now one quick question if we move instead of 5 millimeter if we move by 50 millimeter is the time period of oscillation is going to change no natural frequency of any system is only depend on the mass and the spring stiffness stiffness so if you pull it by 50 millimeter or 500 millimeter the, the the time period of oscillation is not going to change so you can run this problem with changing like instead of 5 millimeter you put it 50 at the end you will get a same peak and valley so you your the, the time period of oscillation will be always 0 0.019 so this was a quick learning on the, the spring mass system in the next session we will try to make it a uh, plot a, a resonant condition for a spring mass system thanks for watching this video don't forget to like us and subscribe us and also some of your friend maybe uh, want to learn abacus please forward this video to them so they can learn the abacus at free of cost thank you bye bye